सो माई डियर फ्रेंड्स भुवनेश्वजा अगेन विथ ट्यूटोरियल ट्वेंटी एट एंड इन दीरीज ऑफ लाइन डिफरेंशियल प्रोटेक्शन इट इज द थर्ड वन विच इज द लास्ट Having completed this, we will be going to generator protection. So let us see how. What are the different ways of line differential protection? Now we will see that in the first line differential protection, that is uh, the directional comparison, or the other one which we have seen, there was no backup. here the backup is there and therefore we will be using the distance basic distance we will be using so let us see how we are using i told you this that main disadvantage of carrier current protection of unit system is there is no backup protection so if we use a distance protection scheme as a base but aid it by carrier signals this disadvantage can be overcome the setting of first line step you see for zone what we say may be shorter or longer than the length of the protected line section so that will not be 80% or 90% it will be different because as per different methods it will be different so let us discuss the first case so let me go to figure itself <coughs> this is a blocking carrier scheme you see it is written here that it is a blocking carrier scheme <coughs> in blocking carrier scheme what we do is relay ra and rb are there line ab we want to protect our main aim is breaker a and b should simultaneously trip and should simultaneously reclose that is the main thing to avoid the power system instability that is the main aim for this aim we are working that aim was not fulfilled in distance protection that aim was not fulfilled in overcurrent protection now that aim is fulfilled here you see the first zone of relay ra extends up to 120% of line section ab so it crosses ab and similarly for zone of relay rb will cross a that is it will be 120% of ba second third zone are as usual so in second and third zone distance is there so if there is a fault in second zone distance will give backup if there is a fault in third zone the distance will give backup so that disadvantage of backup has gone that is that is the main advantage of this so let us see what happens if there is a fault if there is a fault at f1 it is very clear cut that fault at f1 is in the first zone of ra and rb both so we don't need carrier at all we don't need carrier at all because ra will trip locally because and it will trip instantaneously rb will also trip instantaneously both will trip breakers a and b instantaneously will reclose instantaneously our purpose is served but the problem comes if there is a fault at f2 in 20% beyond b where ra will operate but rb will not so operating of ra itself is wrong because fault is not within line section ab so then what do they do that is very important so see this uh, <coughs> control circuit diagram and you will understand ze is the zone one element that means if the fault occurs in zone one 120% and s is the starting element we have discussed that there will be zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 and over with there will be a fourth circle usually it is offset most often so that 
starting element if if the zone one element operates starting element will certainly operate because it is the fourth circle right now voltage occurred at f2 try to understand voltage occurred as f2 so ra will operate in first zone so ze will operate se will op obviously operate so 86 will energize because rr is closed receiver relay contact is closed it is nc so 86 will be energized and breaker will trip that is what we do not want so because we do not want that we have kept one timer contact in between which is normally open it will close after just 3 or 4 cycles it will not wait for a long time it will wait only for carrier signal to be received from b to a that is all so because of timer contact 86 will not be energized and i will i'll be able to stop the operation of breaker at a right meanwhile what will happen meanwhile let me go to b c meanwhile let me go to b b r b will not operate because it is not in the first zone it is not in starting element also so starting element will also not operate but you see there is one reverse looking zone that is the fourth zone nowadays provided in numerical relays reverse looking zone means it will look behind relay b it will look behind relay b if you want to see the uh, rx diagram it is like this a circle crosses beyond b 120% b circle crosses beyond a ra reverse looking relate a it is it is looking reverse and reverse looking b so that fault f2 is now in reverse looking b so f2 will operate f2 will operate f2 reverse looking relay will operate and that if you see from here from here if you see this will operate reverse looking relay, and it will trigger the transmitter and on carrier channel carrier equipment is there you see that carrier equipment which we talked about is there so it will go via this it will go to the receiver at end a it will energize rr so this nc contact will open out so this opens out rr nc contact opens out before this closes the timer contact closes so rr opens out so 86 cannot energize relay a or relay a will not energize circuit breaker at a cannot close cannot open circuit breaker at b in any case is not opening because the fault is not within its range so this is a blocking scheme i am blocking the operation of relay ra therefore this is known as a blocking scheme but the disadvantage is that if carrier fails then reverse looking relay will operate but carrier equipment has failed and if carrier equipment fails then it will not send signal to end a therefore relay at end a will mal operate that is that is the difficulty that i cannot help right so uh, the problem of carrier failure is there so once again as we talked last time you can have carrier on two lines but then the cost then the problem of cost not only on one line because carrier is usually working on either r y or b so if it is working on r you have another carrier on y but then all carrier equipment on y so the system becomes very costly so if you think that your line is so important then you can go for double carrier i mean there is no if you can spend money you can go for double carrier system that is the main disadvantage of the blocking carrier scheme so what all i told 
in blocking code is scheme at block at n a what will happen and at n and b what will happen at a zone one element operates starting element operates therefore breaker tripping will occur but rr if rr opens out then it will not occur that i told you so rr will open out before timer closes and at b zone one element cannot operate because fault is behind b ac also cannot operate so tripping of breaker b is no question breaker b will not trip i don't want it to trip because fault is not within ab however as reverse looking operates it triggers the transmitter and sends the signal to the receiver rr operates rr opens out and breaker at end a does not trip this is in short blocking carrier scheme but if carrier fails I mean, similar is it and A. If fault is before A, same thing will happen. But if carrier fails, then the uh, malo pressure will occur. That is the disadvantage that I was talking. So the another scheme is under rich transfer trip scheme. In this scheme, our zones are as usual, 80 to 90 percent for zone. 50% of the next line, second zone, and third zone, as usual, as usual. There is nothing new. If we see the scheme, it is like this. First zone, 80% of line sex to AB. Second zone, roughly 50% of BC. Third zone will cross C, <coughs> as usual. And therefore, if the fault occurs in second zone, backup is there. So distance is working. So. See, distance is not useless. Try to understand. Whatever we have learned in 13 slides of distance protection is very useful. It's not, a, not useful. But simultaneous tripping is not occurring there. And therefore, we need aid a carrier. So here also we'll take two fault conditions. One at F1. Say fault occurs at F1, then it is in first zone of RA. It is in first zone of RA and it is in first zone of RB also because it is roughly at 50 percent. So both will occur, uh, both will operate simultaneously, both breakers will operate simultaneously, both breakers will reclose simultaneously. Our purpose is served. We don't need carrier here once again. <coughs> but the fault occurs at F2 beyond 80 percent. Then RA will not operate instantaneously. It will operate 0.25 second later. So RA and RB will not operate simultaneously. That is the problem. So that problem can be solved by this control circuitry. Z is the zone one element, which is 80 percent. S is starter element, as I told you. It is the fourth circle. First is zone one, zone two, zone three, fourth circle. So if Z operates. So if the fault is there in F2, that is in second zone. So ZE will not operate. Try to understand that A, ZE will not operate. And because ZE will not operate, 86 cannot energize. Our problem is that ZE will not, SE will operate, but ZE will not operate because fault is in the second zone. But what happens? What happens? Try to understand that this F2 is in first zone of RB. F2 is in first zone of RB. So first zone of RB means ZE at B will operate. SC at B will also operate. So 86 will be energized and breaker at B will trip. All the same, the second contact of ZE, first zone and SC will trigger a transmitter, will send a signal to the receiver. The receiver relay will operate. RR1, the contact will close. Positive RR1, S1, that is the starter element of at end A, end 86. Breaker at end A will trip through carrier. Breaker at end A will trip through carrier. So then why S1 is kept? S1 is known as, this is known as permissive carrier intertripping scheme. It is not written here, 
but it is permissive carrier into tripping scheme. Permissive means, you see, if there is some lightning stroke on line AB, then it is also a frequency stroke. So it will come down through coupling capacitor and it will maloperate the breaker. If there is some switching surge, if some there is some noise frequency signal, then it can maloperate the breaker. Here, because S1 will operate only for genuine fault. Therefore, it, it is a permissive scheme. It is a permissive scheme. So, this is carrier interdripping scheme. And mostly this is used in practice. Because you see here, carrier failure is not a big problem. Because if carrier fails, distance is there. So, carrier failure, no doubt. Simultaneous tripping will not occur, but distance is there, basic distance is there. So carrier failure is not a big problem. <coughs> so this scheme is very common. People are using this scheme. So you have to understand that. Another is carrier acceleration scheme. Carrier acceleration scheme is more or less similar. See what happens in carrier acceleration scheme that if the fault has occurred at F2, it is in zone 1 of RB. So zone 1 of RB will send a signal to RA to extend the zone 1 to whatever length. Multiplier is selectable. You can make it to reach up to B or you can make it to reach beyond B also. So zone 1 at A will accelerate, will be multiplied. The setting of zone 1 will be multiplied in carrier acceleration scheme. So carrier acceleration is very commonly used. Carrier intertripping and carrier acceleration. Both are uh, used uh, very commonly. Overage transfer trip scheme is not much used. Therefore, I, I leave this scheme. I, I don't uh, rather overreach transfer trip scheme. Uh, the single line diagram is there. Overreach transfer trip um, carrier. This is carrier into tripping. This uh, carrier into tripping. Sorry, uh, this is uh, this is not carrier into tripping. This is over the transfer trip scheme only uh, because if the fault occurs here uh, in over the transfer trip scheme what we do that we make it to reach up to 120 percent so if the fault occurs in f2 that part then what will happen that is our problem if fault occurs in f2 then a will operate but b will not operate because the fault is not in the region of B. So, because B does not operate, uh, the uh, because, uh, because the B does not operate, you see, it does not send the signal. So, RR1 will remain open. Therefore, uh, the breaker at A also will not operate and B will also not operate. But this scheme, uh, overreach scheme is not much used in, in the field. So I, I do not go into the details of this, uh, but I have given to you the diagram and everything. Uh, this you please correct that this is not carrier intertripping scheme. This is overreach transfer trip scheme. What happens? That fault has occurred at F2. F1 no problem. F1 both will operate simultaneously locally. F2, A can operate. A can operate. But operation of A cannot trip the breaker because RR1 is open and B is not sending, sending the signal because B is not operating. Therefore, I mean the measuring element at and B is not operating. Therefore, the uh, breaker will not trip at end A. So neither at end A nor at end B, breaker will trip for F2. That is what we want. 
So this is the carrier over rich transfer trip scheme. With this, we will read a small sentence, very important sentence. Nobody is superior. Nobody is inferior. But nobody is equal either. Nobody is superior. Nobody is inferior. Does not mean that all are equal. Nobody is equal also. People are simply unique, incomparable. You are you, I am I. Me me hu, aap aap ho. Jao, don't compare. That is what Osho told. Uh, with that, I would remember, adapt me. <coughs> Please circulate this line differential protection. Very important protection because it trips at breakers at both ends simultaneously and in the interconnected system where national grid is existing and the fault levels are like 25,000 MVA or 30,000 MVA, uh, the fault being continued is very bad. It can damage the system. It can uh, reduce the life of the system. Therefore, you see, this uh, line differential is very important. Uh, many manufacturers, one of my friend is uh, a, a businessman. He has now started line differential relaying, right? And is giving services to people. So line differential is very important. Share it to as many friends as, as you can so that people understand this important protection. Till then, uh, thank you and goodbye.